Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Ben Eady and Stephanie Chan's Kickstarter is almost finished and I wanted to do one more official build while it's still going to kind of show you some versatility to it. And I had a random person comment on a video recently to make a fish, just a fish. And it's about as specific as they got, so I thought, what horrific monster looking fish could I possibly find to uh, make and use some scale mail? Hi, how are you? And I found a picture of an angl angler, angler fish. Um, they're deep sea fish, they're terrifying looking, and they're the ones that had the little uh, bioluminescent light bulb thingy that protrudes from the front of their head, and I thought that'd be a cool build. So today we are making an angler fish and slash wall mount using scale mail. Get yours while it's still going. Be the first. Let's get to building. I start by looking at a couple of pictures from a Google search and sketch out the basic shape. This will be the shape I cut into the foam, then I'll refine the edges and make changes as I need to. I draw my templates on poster board, trace the outline in a sharpie, and then use that to cut my materials out. The pattern you see in the description of my template is the same exact template you see here, just taped to a sheet of paper and scanned into my computer on my printer. All of my pieces have the size EVA foam I used for each part if I made multiple copies and usually names to help you with the orientation of the parts. Sometimes the labeling changes from the final result, but that's because you are seeing me make it up as I go. On this part, there are multiple layers. You just simply cut parts off and trace it again. I lay down a layer of contact cement and start tacking stuff together. To help with alignment, I went ahead and drew where the parts overlay each other. Since I'm going to make it look like it's a mounted fish, I'll build up the thickness on both sides. I'll only worry about detailing the front. Now that I have all of my layers stacked up, it's time to give the angler a better shape and transition between parts. You can cut off bulk areas with a pair of scissors or a box cutter. Then to refine it a little better, I switch over to a sanding drum on my rotary tool. To finish the shape off and smooth everything over, I switch to a stone bit. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while sanding foam. You don't want to breathe these particles in. Thank you. 
To give a better lip around the fish's mouth, I take some EVA half dowels and tack it onto the edge with contact cement. Then I go over the edges with a rotary tool to make sure everything is flush. I also went ahead and sanded out a ridge in the mouth to add a little detail. Time to work on the scales. This is Foam Armory Scale Mill that they are currently doing a Kickstarter for. If you're watching it after it closes, you can go onto their website and see for availability. You get six rows per sheet that are pre-cut. You just have to pop them out and remove the holes. It's super easy to put together. You bend a ring in half and then push it through another row of scale. To cover the front of my fish, I think I ended up using about 22 rows of scale. So that's like four sheets. To put my scale on the base, I trace the bottom base one onto the sheet and then cut off the curve where it meets like the jaw. Put contact cement on the back of the scales and on the fish body to join them together. Be careful when you lay down the parts because once it touches, it's almost impossible to pull it off without ripping it. Since I am not doing the other side, I just wrapped a little over the top and cut off the excess. To give the fins more shape and a little more surface area to glue up the body, I added some more of those half dowels to where they meet the body. Then I split some small 6mm EVA dowels and glued them as like spines on the fins. To attach it to the body, I cut out part of the scale and then glued it to the actual EVA structure below with super glue. To make the gills, I cut out these pointed strips here, sanded them with some little ridges on them, and then cut sections to allow it to bend around the jawline.
The anglerfish is a bit rough looking so I took a stone bit on my rotary tool and gouged out a bunch of wrinkles around the jaws, lip, and even across the scale mail itself. These details will stand out a lot better when we go to the paint job later. For the teeth, I switched over to some 6mm What The Foam. It's a lot denser foam and will hold up a little better than the regular EVA. I also thought about using thermal plastics or just some ABS plastic or a bunch of other random things could be used instead of this, but I figured foam was just as easy. Once I cut out the shape, I rounded over the edges with my rotary tool and cut a slit into the mouth to glue the tooth into. Time to make the luminescent organ that dangles off the front of the female anglerfish. This is a modified dorsal ray with an esca at the tip. I don't really know what all those terms mean, but I just know it's a fishing rod with a little dangly bob light up deal on the end. I'm making mine out of an 18 millimeter EVA dowel and a small piece of fencing wire to reinforce it. I'm going to make the wire a little longer so that I can remove it if I was to sell it and ship it and things like that. Cut a slit half way through the dowel, shove the wire into it, then super glue it back shut. The seam doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to go back later and add ridges to it for details. I found these bullet LED lights at the hobby store that I'm going to use for my light source. You twist them to turn them on and off. I bore out a hole in the end of my EVA dowel to slide this light into. To diffuse the light and make the bulb bigger, I hot glued a ping pong ball on the end of the bullet LED. two coats of Plasti Dip to seal it. Then I faded the colors of the fish with some spray paint from orange to yellow. While I do like how the color looks here, most of the images I found of those fish were not bright colored. They were very muted and dingy looking, so I need to put some washes on it. I add a little bit of brown and black Platifex acrylic paint to my plate, mix a little bit of water with it, and then push it into all of the cracks with a chip brush. Then I take a paper towel and wipe the high points off. Add layers of the process to your parts to get the desired level of dirty. I also went in and hit some of the areas with a little pink and some yellow for the teeth just to bring out some more of the details.
to glue the bullet LED ping pong assembly into the rod. I put super glue just on the tip so that I could still twist the light on and off. Bought a bunch of these glass eyes on Amazon a while back and have used them for several projects here and there. Here I'm just gluing it down into the eye socket that I've bore out earlier. To make the mount, I went through my Tupperware cabinet in the kitchen and found this lid that was the perfect size and shape. I traced two of them onto some 10mm EVA foam, cut them out, and then glue them together with contact cement. I added a couple of holes on the back to latch it onto a wall later. I try to space a ruler evenly from the edges with the help of a 1-2-3 block on each side and then bore them out with my rotary tool. Then I burn in some wood grain texture onto the front of the mount with my wood burner. Make sure that you put your respirator on and work in a well ventilated area. You don't want to breathe in fumes of burning EVA. Two layers of Plasti Dip on this one too. I push some black into the burned ridges and wipe off the high points. Then I go back over that area with lighter and lighter passes of light brown to make it look more like wood texture. So that it fits flush on my mount, I cut some wedges out of EVA to level it off. Then I glue the fish onto the mount with some super glue and we're finished. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I think it turned out pretty cool. Definitely the ping pong ball slash bullet light adds a nice little effect and all you have to do to turn it on is just simply twist it. 
uh, which is nice. You don't have to worry about wiring or any of that stuff. But if you wanted to, you could run a wire inside of there and out the back and plug it into the wall so it'll be permanently on. But yeah, maybe you will try and make something using scale mail that may surprise you and others and how horrific the build will actually be. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you. How'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Um, if you get real close, you can see that the teeth are really good for eating cameras. Ah! If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and would like to see me continue to bring more content your way, consider joining these awesome people on my Patreon. Let's build a bigger, better, more creative community together.